Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Um, I'll be popping up every, every now and again to do a poem, so just so you know. Um, and uh, the, first, the first poem originally appeared in the pages of the Guardian Works section. Uh, it's called Works Perks, and it's dedicated to anyone who at any point in their working life has taken something home from work, of which there were loads around and no one's really going to miss it, but which, from a very strict legal perspective, could be considered to be theft. Is that, is that anyone here besides me that that could, that could apply to? Thank you. Thank you for it. So it's just, just me and one or two others. Um, the weekly fire alarm is about to begin. Um, did they say we should? There's absolutely no need to evacuate anything. <laughs> Let's be clear on that. So we, we just got to the point where we were all about to share things we... No, we weren't. We weren't about to share at all. Um, I'll just carry on. This is... This is um, it's called Works Perks. It's just a little thing. I wouldn't call it pilfering or petty theft. I took one, yes, but look, there are so many left. I'm in on time, I smile, work hard. Why should my conscience twitch or flinch? Each working week you take a yard, so why begrudge me my half inch? You take the best hours of my day, what do you give me? Take home pay. I'm so tired I can hardly speak. You take the best days of my week, you take the best weeks of my month. I take some paper, this hole punch. You take the best months of my year. I take this swivel chair, oh dear. <laughs> You take the best years of my life, a laminator for the wife. <laughs> so now please look the other way. I need my little takeaway to give myself a token raise to supplement my take home praise. Some get to meet celebrities or go and junkets overseas. I'm simply taking some of these, some paper clips, some folder files, a print stick, stapler, carpet tiles, <laughs> some tipex, a waste paper bin, this thing for putting thingies in, this ream, OK, this box of reams, <laughs> this laptop, well, you took my dreams. How did it ever come to this? My perky, chirpy perquisites have been turned into exhibits, these trinkets I gave house room to, exhibits A to W. Don't ask what reason or what rhyme drove pretty me to petty crime. Nobody's perfect. I guess it built up over time because I'm worth it. Thank you. I had to say that. I have, yeah. Um. <laughs> so uh, I just, I'm, I'm, stu I'm still um, living in the future, uh, ironically. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the future, by the way, all conferences will have a poet. Um, <laughs> at, the moment, at the moment, it's just work tech, and interestingly, quite a lot of mental health conferences also. <laughs> you, sh you share that sort of futuristic vision. Yes, you do. Um, I wrote, a, I wrote a poem about a futurologist. Uh, he called himself a futurologist rather than a futurist, and I admire people who, who live in the future. I, I live in a little town called Totnes where there's a lot of pressure to live in the present. People actually stop me in the street and go, hey, Matt, be here now, <laughs> which is really irritating. Um, I don't think it's natural to live in the present the whole time. Now and again, it's really exciting. All the time, it's relentless. Um, and I've done, a, I've done a, a survey, not a scientific survey, just asking people, do you live in the present? And quite a large group of people go, no, no, but I used to. <laughs> Another group, you say to them, do you live in the present? They go, no, but I will, I will. And they put it on a pedestal, they're going to get there, but not today. There's a third group, you say to them, do you live in the present? They go, ah, would that I did. <laughs> I actually had to look these people up in a grammar book. It turns out these people are living in the subjunctive. Difficult people to reach. Anyway, this, this poem, inspired by Ray Johnston, of a, 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 future, a, a British futurologist, um, shows just how wrong it's possible to predict even the present, because this is obviously a, 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 an ill-informed picture of a future. Nevertheless, here we go, futurology. If the future was a creature, what would be the creature's features? If it had a message for us, how would such a message reach us from that infinite warehouse where they keep all that's yet to unfold, that unset jelly in a shape-shifting mould? How do we make that closed world less opaque? Let's ask a futurologist. 
They don't use I Ching yarrow sticks or any form of tarot decks, but telling trends and tendencies and underlying strands to tease into an Ariadne thread down which they let their thoughts be led. From breakthroughs in a science lab to indiscretions in a cab. No phenomenons too ordinary to qualify as augury. A child is smacked in Barnstable, some lips are licked in Istanbul. They read scientific journals and the secret hearts of colonels, let their thoughts fly on the thermals of world media hot air. They gather all this data and say, I know what happens later. There are trends here that'll help us, one or two that might yet harm us, although telling there is nothing that's not found in Nostradamus, if you read it properly. But often found among a futurologist's mementos, a well-stitched sampler saying, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. It is the sustainability section, isn't it, coming up? So some people are kind of wielding their little thing at me just to see, does it work as a remote? No, it doesn't. Um, and uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't decide what to do, but I've, 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 got a, um, I've got a poem in this book called Think Before You Print This Poem. <laughs> Which just feels so pertinent that I shall do it. I, 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 just do, I do warn you, this involves me singing. <laughs> a couple of people said, are you going to wake us up after lunch? And I thought, yeah. Well, I'll not wake you up, just shock you slightly. Um, Think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a celebration of recycling. I met a man who recycles every single thing in his life. He was in the papers because he just um, made a jacuzzi out of a council skip. And they said, you're such an eco-warrior. And he said, no, I'm just a skip rat. <laughs> and I was impressed by that. So this, this welds together. Um, uh, some of you will recognise a little bit of William Blake. Some of you will recognise the sound of music. And some will recognise the old saying that one man's... Meat is another man's poison, but it's been updated many times. To see a hot tub in a council skip and heaven in a bald tyre. Behold infinity in your local tip and eternity in some frayed electrical wire. It seems one man's chimney pot's another man's top hat. One man's bauble is another man's jewel. One man's cheapskate's another man's skip rat. One man's chip fat's another man's fuel. One man's cheek is another man's chutzpah. One man's puddle is another man's foot spa. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was the best bit. It's not good. Yeah. Broken umbrellas, malfunctioning kettles, empty containers of various metals that never quite did what it said on their tins. These are a few of my favourite things. <laughs> One man's tip is another man's temple. One man's junk is another man's joy. One man's meat is another man's pen pal. One man's man is another girl's boy. One man's pop guns, another man's Uzi. One man's grit is another man's muesli. Leftovers, hand-me-downs, chuck-aways, off-cuts, use pre-loved second hands, rejects and cast-offs, all the fresh junk that this rampantly unsustainable consumer society brings. <laughs> These are yet more of my favourite things when the cold bites, when my skip leaks, when I've lost all zest. I simply dismember my favourite things and then I don't feel so stressed. That's it. Thank you. Picking up on um, nutrition and on sustainability, um, I've got some potato-based love poetry to delight you with after that break. Um, a couple of short poems, and I have to say, uh, commissioned, I'm proud to say, by the Waste and Resources Action Project's Love Food, Hate Waste campaign, uh, who phoned me up and said, Matt, we'd like you to write a love poem to a potato. Uh, and I said, that's great. And they said, uh, do you think you could write us a potato-based um, potato love poem that would change the behaviour of large sections of society? And I said, sure. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> They said, we'd, we'd like to, to write a poem that takes the form of, uh, y your, your love takes the form of not wanting to waste any of that potato. So I said, do you want me to write a poem to the whole potato? And they said, Matt, we think you're really beginning to hear us now. <laughs> so I wrote, I wrote the whole potato and I read it to a room full of um, advertising executives over a Skype conference call with as much passion as I shall read it to you. I love the whole potato, skin and all. The poe, the tay, the toe, it's criminal. To throw even a bit of it away, say whoa, say hey, say whoa, hey, whoa. Don't throw away the potato. 
do not betray the po, the te is not the way to go. No way, you must be true to to po te to total po and te and to the to and tal of total too, but not the be the tray the al of betrayal. Don't feed the crim the in the all of criminal, but love the whole potato skin and all. <laughs> okay, I just I do that. Thank you. I, d I did that to make you... That's, that's the universal sign of please clap my poetry, recognised all around the world. And I do that because it was important to make you clap because they didn't clap. They went, they went, nah. They said, the thing is, Matt, we're hoping you'd be a bit more specific. We're hoping you'd get across in your poem that if your potato was to sprout in its storage area, you wouldn't just chuck it away, but you'd peel it, you'd boil it, you'd mash it. And if you had some mash left over, you wouldn't just chuck that away. Put it in a little bag, put it in the freezer, have it later. And could you make it a lot shorter? And so I wrote... It takes half a second... So I wrote, oh, potato, no part of you's inedible, though all of you's inaudible. The taste of you's incredible, the price of you's affordable. No spud is dud. If you get sprouty, I don't go all throwy outy. <laughs> but focus all my passion into peeling, into mashing. I still need you, so I freeze you, saying softly, See you later, mashed potato. <laughs> so Thank you. You clapped too soon earlier. Um, th this, this is a digital poem to, to, to finish, and I'm um, grateful that uh, Philip Ross heard this on the radio. Uh, I, I was doing it in honour of Martha Lane Fox, the government's internet or oh, digital champion. And... Um, Philip heard it and said, we'll have him at WorkTech because he's a visionary of the highest order. It was originally commissioned by a school in Stoke that had just achieved specialist maths and IT status and was celebrating with an arts festival. And they, they phoned me up and said, would you come along and would you write us a special information technology poem? And I said yes, because it was months away. And um, two days to go, or less than that, I, I, I was uh, thinking, OK, I'm going to write a digital poem. And I sat in a brioche cafe in Totnes, where some of my best ideas come. And uh, I wrote that, okay, did, did, words to do with information t technology, I wrote down bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, and I read it off, bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, and I thought, well, that's fantastic, because it was the easiest, fastest, and most convenient thing for me to think, <laughs> I think. And so it was a bit like going with the first page of Google. So I wrote down bit, byte, kilobyte. Um, this, is, this is the poem that came out of that. Bit, 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 byte, byte. Kilobyte, kilobyte, bit byte, kilobyte, kilobyte, megabyte, kilobyte, megabyte, megabyte, gigabyte, 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 bit byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, bit byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, gigabyte, bigabyte, bigabyte, Burger King. Tuck in Burger King, bloody big appetite, Burger King, gigabyte, Big Mac, mega deal, killer bug, killer bite, lullaby, night night, lullaby, night night, glitter bug, gigabyte, glitter ball, disco, dance floor, satellite, 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 cellulite, celebrate, salivate, sell by date, corduroy trousers, purple tank top, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Internet, interface, winter coat, cyberspace, megaphone, megabyte, internet, silicone, digital silicone, digital silicone, silicon valley, pelican crossing, pelican crossing, silicon valley, silicon crossing, chili con carne, pelican valley, garlic dressing. Mm, 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 mm. Syllabub, sybarite, syllable, start right, vitamin, vegemite, gullible, gigamite, stalactite, stalagmite, superglue, erudite, erudite, aminite, M&M, acabilk. Mm. Twiddle dum, twiddle dee, telly, tubbies, twiddle dum, twiddle dee, telly, tubbies, sellotape, cellophane, cellar black, blind hate. Mm, 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 mm. Technophile, technophobe, techno notice, technophile, technophobe, techno notice. Dolomite, dollar bill, diner rod, dynamite, dell it up, get it right, digital, kilobyte, get it right, get it right. Halibut, uppercut, killer bee, kilobyte, get it right, get it right. Megabyte, gigabyte, kilobyte, alibi, gigabyte, megabyte, kilobyte, bite. Bit, 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 bite, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, night, night. That's how it ends.